Yes, I see you. Uh, I was trying to do something. Thank you. So, I was doing the temperature blanket, and because I use a sweet pea stitch, it's a lot shorter than an actual blanket. And there's a pen stuck to my quilt. All right, then. Oh, it's the pen that I was marking off. This is what I'm doing. By the way, I keep track of where I am to put the date and the color of that date's row, and then as I do the row, I check it off. Handy tip if anybody's actually doing a temperature blanket. Well, it was getting really long, because what I was going to do is I was going to... Hello. Your butt's in the camera, dude. Your butt is all over the camera. No, you can't step on my quilt. You can move the quilt, and then you can sit on my lap. Anyway, it's getting really long, longer than my bed. I thought eh, what I was going to do is going to do like an afghan, but it was getting really long for that. And I was going to do, okay, well, I'll just do a skinnier row for this year, and then next year attach a row to this year's. But it was getting really super long. So what I ended up doing, as you can see, halfway through the year, and I did use a calculator to figure out, like, okay, what's half of 365 days? Okay, well, what day, roughly, would that be? And on that day, which has passed, as you can see, started a new row, and I'm going back up the side. Might sound a little confusing, but that's okay. I'm doing a sweet pea stitch, and the cat is trying desperately, well, maybe not desperately, but trying to be nice enough not to play with my yarn. I got him a toy that looks like a yarn ball, and he's been playing with that. And I apologize for the background noise, but you can't have music in YouTube videos because then whoever the music belongs to will block your video. And I have playlists, so that would be multiple people who would have the opportunity to block my video. And that's not cool. So, I'm gonna pause the video while I go the rest of the way this way. <laughs> Unless he's gonna be cute, then we might keep, video keep recording. But, Oh, you have something in your eyelash. Let me get that for you. Um, and I'll pick it up when I get to back to this side, so you can see what I do instead of chaining three to turn around. I wanted to do a You Now video, which the music wouldn't have mattered, but You Now isn't working. I would have done a Facebook live stream and I have passed the option to do a live stream like a million times and the one time I actually want to do one I can't remember where the hell it was. I must have clicked on everything on Facebook and I couldn't find it. Facebook, Facebook Messenger could not find the live streaming option. And I know I've seen it before. But Okay, well, YouTube on my Roku doesn't work for very long, unfortunately. It drives me absolutely bonkers. If any of my friends know how to fix the damn Roku to where it'll play an entire playlist without crapping out, like, 5 to 20 songs in, that'd be super, super duper information for me. Are you biting me? You see this? He's biting me. If I pet you for like a few seconds, will you stop biting me? You see what I put up with? Anytime I do anything for me, he gets like this. Like, no, no, you have to pay attention to me. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. I don't know if you can hear, but the weather's gone kind of cold and rainy. And I got a notification when I went to look up the temperature for today. That we're supposed to get hail tonight. Today or tonight. I don't know. I was saying, don't go on the water. I didn't hear any hail. But then again, I was watching Jacksepticeye, so... K 
can't really hear much over him. <laughs> Can I go back to work now? That'd be super. I'm gonna pause because this is gonna take forever to do with a cat in my lap. But let's get a brief shot of the cat in my lap being super duper cute. And he kind of sprawls way outside the lap. By the way, Kai, I still have the yarn drum and it's epic. So we're gonna pause while I finish up this and then come back. And according to the thing, uh, when I come back this way, it'll be it'll be light green as well. Pause, activate. Ew, you can see my arm. That's not pretty. Sorry about that. Okay, I haven't finished the row, but I found it humorous to note that the cat had a sudden itch. And I said, oh, do you need flea drops? And as you will note, no cat. <laughs> my cat, I swear. I swear this cat understands English sometimes. Also, <clears throat> if you'd like me to do a tutorial on how to do the sweet pea pattern on YouTube, because I did one on you now back, it's probably based on the time of day, but I did a tutorial on you now. If you would like me to do a tutorial on YouTube, I will be more than happy to do a sweet pea tutorial. For anybody who doesn't know how to do it. Also, I made a sock monkey hat. I haven't put the googly eyes on it yet because I don't want regular button eyes. I want googly eyes on my sock monkey hat because it's for Gishwes. But if you'd like me to do a tutorial for the sock monkey hat, I would be more than willing to do that as well. Because I know that some people had. No, that was a different thing. They had a question about how you switch colors, which, again, more than willing to do a tutorial. It's not that big a deal. You know, I learned from from books and from my aunt, and that's not, that's not before. And as you can see by now, for some stitches, I don't really even have to look at the work. Actually, my eyes are kind of squinty because I'm looking down at the camera, but for certain stitches, I don't even have to look. I could literally do it blindfolded, and here's the cat again. I'm so really tempted to say flea drops again. When, why he does that? I don't know why. Why do you lick my paper? What did I spill on my paper that is so so tasty. I don't know. By the way, chain three, now I'm turning around. <laughs> what? What? Yes, you are super cute. And it turns out... Ah, no biting! Turns out, it may not have been because I said flea drops, it may have been because he was hungry because I heard him eating. And why must you always bite me, huh? Why do you bite? You know I don't like being bitten. By the way, I'm not actually holding him that hard, that close, uh, tightly. As you can see, he just walked right out. Cat butt. Yes. You exist. I acknowledge your existence. Does that make you happy? Happy. He's going to block the camera, so I'm going to pause until I get to where I need to be. So I think I know what part of the problem with my Roku is. While I've been recording, I've noticed that I keep seeing this little message at the bottom of my screen that says, connected to Wi-Fi, fill in the blank of the name of the Wi-Fi, which I'm not going to give out, obviously. Um, so it's like, it keeps disconnecting and reconnecting. So it's, and I have tried everything that I can try. I, and Five. Five. I've even tried trading in the boxes and nothing flipping works. So I really need that friend of mine who knows how to isolate my Wi-Fi signal 
to have time to show. Well, I think Charter said there's a salesperson that said that their tech support could probably show me how to isolate my signal. But it's like, I'm not going to believe that until I hear it from tech support. Because you would think tech support would have told me that right off the bat. Or immediately after switching the boxes didn't work. But no, nobody said anything. So I need, I don't know, I live in a huge apartment building. It's, 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 it's a, um, I don't know if you can call it a skyscraper, but it's a tall building. And... The way one installation dude explained it is that it's one cable, or very few cables, that have to branch out to every apartment, and then they have to go up a floor, which is another branch, and then they have to branch to all the floors on that that floor, and you know branch again, over, again, over. Again, over and it's branching and by the time it gets up to the top of the building or near the top of the building it's branched so many times that you're not gonna have a reliable signal which might also explain what the problem with you now was but it's also I think probably a peak time for you now so I've noticed that it tends to freeze more when people are more likely to be on so, like, if I were to broadcast excuse you at, like, maybe one in the afternoon, then maybe there might be fewer people on, or, like, late night there might be fewer people on, I don't know. But, like, certain times of day are less, I guess, saturated. And it doesn't matter what hashtag you use, whether it's art cooking or crochet, which are the three that I use most frequently. Um, so I don't think the hashtag matters. It's not like they have a different server for every hashtag because people are going to come up with weird hashtags. So I don't know what the F, but I couldn't even get Periscope to work at all on my tablet, so I just got rid of it. I could watch other people's periscopes, but I couldn't watch, or I couldn't, like, couldn't broadcast myself. I did try. And I felt really bad because then one of my Twitter friends added me to, like, this group of periscopers, and I'm like, sorry, dude, it never actually worked. Up, oh, see, there it says, connected to Wi-Fi, fill in the blank name. That is the third time since I've been recording, and don't look at the time that's on it now because, remember, I have paused frequently. So let's let's just ballpark 20 minutes have passed. This thing has reset three times or has crapped out and then reconnected three times. Okay, so I've got to the end here. Now normally in this last little bit you would put three double crochets, but because we're doing this a little differently we're only going to do two double crochets in this last one. The third one we're going to put here at the join of the double crochet across from it. Well, there I did it again! That's four! Four times it says connected to Wi-Fi. Ugh. Anyway, so joining this to the other side is basically that third double crochet. So then, instead of chaining three, we're going to put one through this little... I don't know if you can see that well, but in a double crochet, if you look at it, there's like a smaller loop connected to a bigger loop. So we're going to put one, one stitch in that smaller loop and two stitches in the bigger loop, and that's our three stitches. Now accidentally realized I don't have to do a separate video for color changing because it's going to change colors. So before I forget, let me mark off that I did that green row. Yes, I know I'm holding a dangling end of yarn. It will make sense, I promise. 
or it should, presuming the video quality is good enough. All right, so here we have our little dangling thread, which I probably should have made a little bit longer, but I have a cat in the way, and that's my excuse. All right, so turn the work back around. No, it is not a toy, thank you. Grab your second color. If you don't know how to do a double crochet, this is gonna be a little confusing and I apologize. So you hold the yarn like this and wind it around like you would have if it had been a continuation of the green. So you wind it around the hook and you put the stitch where you would have put the green. And I'm being vague here because this is how it works for, ooh, for any stitch or pattern or anything. You continue on as if you would with the color you were using before. And in this case, there's a chain. Just ignore that for now. Now, you see these two ends. What you do? Do not leave them hanging or it'll come unraveled. The next stitch, see how I hold both colors flat against the stitch I'm working into? Then you are essentially sewing them into the project. And this is a sweet pea stitch, so I'm actually doing five stitches in the same stitch, which is a little confusing, but on the upside, it really, really anchors those trailing ends. And you have to continue to hold those two little trailing bits flat until you run out of yarn. See, the green is pretty much anchored in there. It's not going to make it to the next stitch. The blue made it a little bit longer, so we continue to hold it down and anchor that in. Ta-da! Now you cannot see the trailing ends. And you've also seen how I did because what a lot of people would will do if they're going to do this sort of thing is they will do the two halves and then stitch them together. But being autistic, I thought of a different way to do it. I'm not going to say better, just different. So yeah. It looks like one piece that just kind of changes colors in the middle a little bit. And the great thing is, the year begins and ends with winter. So the color scheme will, should, I'm not going to say it will because Minnesota winters and springs and autumns are notoriously uh, unpredictable because we live on the water, or at least I do and water messes with weather in unpredictable ways. Well, I mean, it, if you're a meteorologist, it's predictable to a point, but still. The point being that <coughs> there should be the lighter colors here. Yeah, the one hot day we had, that dark green. One day was in that dark green. And I might add, the dark green in this thing is only 78 to 88 degrees, which means, and I'm going about average temperatures, mind you, but it means that the average temperature has not, in Minnesota, well, where I live, gone above 88 degrees. But anyway, so summers will be all, you know, blues and turquoises. And then once we get to autumn, it'll be turquoises and teals that one random green day in there. Not the band. And then we'll get to turquoises and a few light blues, and then we'll get into the purple and turquoise territory. So hopefully it will all line up. <clears throat> Mind you, there's a slight difference in colors of purple because different brands. Oops. There's maybe a little bit of disparity between the beginning of the year and the end of the year, but 
God willing and the creek don't rise, I will have a completed blanket that is just long enough for a bed, just wide enough for a bed. I'm uh, not, well, maybe not, maybe not wide enough for a bed, I don't know, but maybe a twin bed. <clears throat> maybe I'm making a twin blanket, because it's only going to be Let's see how it measures across my bed. Well, it goes across my bed, but there's no skirt on either side, and I have a queen. So, I mean, if it was on a full-size bed, there'd be a little lip, and if it was on a twin... Yeah, I'm making a twin-size blanket. Um, maybe I'll send it to my daughter. Maybe I'll send it to one of my other kids got so many darn kids, it's not like I can play favorites. I think what I'll do is New Year's Eve, get all the kids on the horn and say, alright, this is what I made. Does anybody want it? I know I'm single. I could feasibly own a twin instead of a queen. But... I like to sprawl. What can I say? You know, twin beds, even though I'm short or vertically challenged, that just goes for the length. Twin beds do not have enough width for an adult human to sprawl. Not to mention, if I have any of my kids up here to visit, I don't have a couch. So they'd kind of have to share the bed with me. And that ain't gonna happen with a twin. I, you know, and if I wasn't gonna put a pet net there, I'd just get a bunk bed. I suppose I could put the pet net in the living room somewhere. No idea where, because my wall is covered in certificates of online classes and, you know, Nano Remo stuff. And once I remember to print that out. There'll be a Gishwed certificate in there too. So there's really nowhere else to put the pet net. <sighs> Small apartment problems. Anywho, that was a little TMI and a lot of crochet. Well, a little too much personal information, maybe not too much information in general. <clears throat> but that was a rather long tutorial, sorry about that, because cat, uh, on how to do, do what I'm doing. I don't think anybody else is going to do what I'm doing. Other people, like the sister that roped me into it, are just doing a single stitch, which you can go as wide as your bed and not have a problem, and it's probably what I should have done, but I'm like, you know what? I'm a pro. Single stitch is boring. But I'm gonna make it narrower. But I didn't realize how freaking narrow it was gonna turn. Well, I realized how narrow it was gonna. See? Reconnected to my Wi Fi again. That's five. Five in the past, what, half hour? Anyway, I didn't realize how much longer this was gonna be than single crochet. That's where I went wrong. There aren't really any patterns that are the same length as single crochet, so... Mm. So if you're doing a temperature blanket, or any blanket in general, and it winds up being longer and shorter than you anticipated, now you know how to double the length halfway through. That's also, by the way, how I do my quilts. I don't do the individual squares and then stitch them together, I stitch them to each other as I go. Which is a little awkward if you use the wrong weight of yarn. And like there's just this one odd like shriveled little square amidst all the others. Of course that was before I found out that you can actually fix the shape. I Like with yarn weights or something? I don't remember. Anyway, 
this is really super long. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, if my sister's watching, this thing is honking huge. And we're only halfway through the year. Well, halfway through the year and five days. So. <sighs> Apologies for the cat interruptions. Apologies for the really super long video, but hopefully this helped somebody.